um, in the past few weeks, there have been multiple missions to Mars. The Hope mission by UAE, NASA's Mars mission, and uh, China's Time Moon 1 probe. There's always been a lot of interest in studying Mars, given how it's a planet most similar to our Earth in our solar system, and as such makes for a good starting point to probe the million dollar question, does life exist beyond Mars? Beyond Earth, not Mars. <laughs> so uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Shani Mate, and today I'll be presenting my research done so far on uh, radiation, titled Analysis of Radiation Exposure on Astronauts and Martin Space Missions. So our project was led by Dr. Dimita Atri. Our group of 15 YSPs working on this were given different areas of focus to maximize our efficiency. My part in this project was being a member of the ionizing radiation team, and as such, the focus of this presentation will be on simulation of radiation, the analysis of its results, and their significance. My team members include Azal Bakar, Romeo Vito Leo Lemos, and Sri Ramdev. So why exactly are there so many missions? Well, these missions hope to give us an even better understanding of the red planet, and eventually, we hope to send astronauts to Mars, but doing so will require us to have a proper understanding of the environment they will be dealing with, not just during transit, but also on the surface, right? And one aspect of the environment, as said by many of my colleagues so far, is the radiation exposure they'll be subjected to. And that's why this project is important. The project is titled Radiation and its Effects on Astronaut Health in Long-Term Space Missions. The sub-teams within the project are ionizing radiation, ionizing radiation and astronaut health, and mitigation techniques, with which Julia, Paulina, and Trina are with. The project aims to estimate the long-term effects of radiation exposure on astronaut health with focus on the lower Earth orbit, transit to Mars, radiation exposure on the Mars surface. To understand this project, we must first understand the type of radiation we'll be dealing with. So the radiation can either be ionizing, high energy, or low, en or low ionizing, but non-ionizing, low energy. Non-ionizing radiation is less energetic. An example is the UV radiation we're exposed to from the sun. Our project focuses on ionizing radiation. There are several forms of it. Uh, the galactic cosmic rays, which uh, is also GCR, which is no, which is a uh, radiation coming from deep space. Um, then there's trapped particles in the Earth's magnetic field, known as the Van Allen radiation belt, and there's solar energy particles caused by sunbursts from the sun. In 1972, NASA had planned to send either Apollo 16 or Apollo 17 in August, but luckily they changed the date. And I say luckily because that was the year of the infamous solar storm of 1972. It took place in August and. What happened was it resulted in widespread electric and communication grid disturbances and also detonated several naval mines in the Pacific Ocean. So it's not the best thing to happen when you're gonna launch a mission. Um, so what we need to understand next is the effect this radiation will have on humans. Sorry. Yeah, so um, you can have acute effect, which is large doses of radiation accumulated over a short period of time or a chronic effect, which can be seen after a long period of time or decades later after the exposure. The estimated radiation dose we expect is about one to two severity, which is actually quite high. So um, this was all we knew, like my team knew, before we started the project by the means of background reading. Once we had an idea of what we were doing, different members were assigned different skills according to their roles. So we split the workings into three core stops. Simulation of conditions, analysis of simulations, and study of analysis. So let's talk about the tools we use to carry out these um, tasks. A simulation of conditions was carried out by GM4. GM4 was used for simulation purposes, but we had to edit the source code a bit to fit the needs of our project because the original source code did not register the radiation deposited in a few crucial organs. Every organ has a characteristic organ ID. And this made it convenient to calculate the energy deposited in each one when it can draw any of the code for it. To simulate the radiation deposition for the entire radiation spectrum, we simulated energies from 10 MeV to 100,000 MeV. And the number of runs for each simulation varied from 125,000 to a million runs. The human phantom was simulated by background proton radiation. And each energy simulation was given a different set of runs to broaden the experiment set and get us more results in varying intensities. So they were filed with 10 MeV and a million runs, or 100 MeV with 250K runs, and so on. Data was extracted from the root files created by the simulation using an analysis software called uh, Root, developed by CERN. 
It enables statistically sound scientific analysis and visualization of large amounts of data, which was convenient for this project because, as I said, there were hundreds of thousands of runs and root files encompassed a lot of data. A C++ macro was developed to analyze the root files and find energy in each organite. Since the total energy deposition was the result of several hundreds of thousands of runs, to get the average values, what we did was we divided the total energy deposited by the number of runs for each file. So if there was a file with energy of say 100 MeV having 250K runs, the macro would find total energy for the required organity. And then that value would be divided by the number of runs for that particular file. So in this case, it would be divided by 250K. This project of ours is as the theoretical counterpart of the actual mission to Mars. And as with every other scientific project, there are bound to be some discrepancies between the practical and theoretical observations. The data obtained by our simulation was plotted using a Python program. This was done for each organ ID with the energy deposition on the y-axis and the energies on the x-axis. In a lot of cases, we utilized logarithmic bending. What that basically means is that instead of doing it for say energies of 10 MeV, 20 MeV, 30 MeV, and so on, up to 100,000, with 10 raised to one, 10 raised to two, 10 raised to three, et cetera, because that way we still reach 100,000, but with far fewer stops. The main outcomes of this project were to understand the radiation dosage absorbed by different organs once we calculated radiation dose deposited for the entire solar proton spectrum. And then pinpoint the mitigation techniques that would be the most effective according to the data we obtained. Only after going to the biological literature will we be able to predict the potential side effects of being exposed to the radiation. Our project only simulated protons. But obviously, there are numerous other sources of radiation in outer space, and understanding their impact is just as crucial. The results obtained in the course of this project are by the simulation of radiation on the male human plant model, MIRD only. But we did not get any data about the organs exclusive to the female anatomy. There are other models, such as the ICRP and the BCH, and it would be advantageous to understand radiation analysis using these ones as well. It is vital to perform further evaluations and examinations because body types and postures and accuracy is extremely important for radiation protection. Although our journey to Mars is still quite a long way off, seeing promising results in our research and you know, getting to, do, getting to interact with people as passionate and enthusiastic about science as us, you know, partying in studies, the day is not far off when we can actually boldly go where no man's gone before. So um, if you have any questions for me, I'd like to answer them now. Thank you, Ashani. Very nice presentation. Very nice graphics. You can get a lot of compliments in the chat. Does anybody have a quick question for Ashani? If not, I have one. Um, Ashani. Sure. Which organ is the most sensitive to radiation? So far from what we've observed, um, all like the ones we plotted for, all of them showed a very similar trend. There wasn't a lot of difference from what we've been able to get so far. I'm not very sure about this answer, but um, ideally speaking, are this, there are differences between what um, people have gotten with different models as well. So I think it's more specific depending on what model we're using. But for ours, I, I'm not sure I've been able to figure out which one's the most sensitive. Great, thank you. Thank you again.